Hey everybody, it's Paul. And Steve. And we are back to discuss it all. And we've got a great topic for you today. But before we get to that, uh, I would like to ask you guys to do us a favor. We have almost 300 subscribers at the time that we're filming this video. If this channel gets to 500 subscribers, Steve and I would love to do a question and answer video, but we need your help. So leave any questions you have for us down in the comments below. Now also, if you have any uh, suggestions for future videos that you would like to hear us discuss, please leave those in the comments down below. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoy this video at some point later on, when you, right. if you watch for a few minutes you decide. Um, <laughs> Hit that and hit the share button. That really helps us out with the YouTube algorithm and helps other people to find this channel. Yep. All right, Steve, what's today's topic? So we love music. We do. We love we love movies. We love music. We especially love movies that have uh, great music with them. And today we're talking about those songs from the 1980s that were number one songs that we don't like. That's right. And there aren't a lot of them. It was, yes, we, we did the 90s. We did this with the 90s, and just, to, just as a spoiler alert, we're going to probably do it with the 2000s. And, uh, yeah. you know, do we go back further? Do we go to the 70s, maybe? Uh, probably so, uh, yeah. 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 We'll do that, too. So, um, so, yeah, you're right. The 90s, I felt like, was kind of easy yeah. for me. It was, it was tough to do the 80s. Yeah. It so, really was. So we took all of the number one songs from mm -hmm. the 1980s, so from 1980 to 1989, those songs that were our least favorite. But that they, we didn't like. Yeah. But they went to number one. They made it to number one. If we weren't the voters. Yeah. Because they wouldn't have made it. No, no they, they wouldn't have made it. Made it. So we've got, we've got those. We've got our, our, our top five in no particular order. And I'll go first today. Sounds uh, good. So I'll, I'll um, drop my number one. These are, these are kind of in chronological order, I guess. So maybe okay. they're not in, in no, uh, they're not just indiscriminate. Kind of in chronological order. I'll okay. get uh, maybe maybe my top five. So uh, the first of those is from 1983. It's David Bowie, Let's Dance. Okay. There, there's. I don't think there's any. I didn't like the video of the song. I don't like the song. I don't care for the lyrics of the song. Okay. Um, there's just kind of, and I like David Bowie. Yeah. He's, he's, you know, easily one of one of my favorite artists. But Let's Dance just isn't a isn't a song. It's not even a dance song. So it's not. Yeah. It's, <laughs> You're right about that. So maybe it's the contradiction. Uh, okay. You know, maybe it should be let's sleep or let's sit down or okay. something. But anyway, so that that's one of my least favorite. Now, so so I'm going to have to disagree with you on that because that that was actually that was my exposure to David Bowie. Oh, okay. And I actually I, I enjoy that song. I like the build up in the song. Mm, okay. um, I, there, there there's not much about that song that I don't really like. Okay. But having said that. I find myself now liking a lot of other David Bowie songs more than I like that song. That okay. So that song is not going to be anywhere near my favorite song. Right. Not even not even near my favorite David Bowie song, but far far from my not in your favorite. bottom five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, so yeah. So that's just one of those areas where yeah. where, where we disagree. Yeah. But, but yeah. But we both love David Bowie. So we're that's right. without a doubt. All right. Yep. Yep. All right. So I'm going to stick with 1983. Okay. As well, and this is going to be for me. This is going to be. Uh, I think this is a one-hit wonder. Uh, Dexy's Midnight Runners <laughs> had come on Eileen. Yeah, and and I, I'm a, the same way. Right. The same way that you feel about David Bowie. It's it's. I, I, I don't like the music. Right. I don't like the song. Mm -hmm. Don't like the video. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing about it you like. Just nothing about it I really like. Yeah. Um, and I don't. For the life of me, I don't understand how that went to number one. Oh. I really don't. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it just goes to show that you know. That, Four or five guys with you know blue overalls that they don't snap <laughs> you know, can hop around barefoot and yeah. get a number one video. That's right. Yeah, like country. Country. <laughs> who's picking these songs? Yeah, but. yeah, and I I don't I don't understand who is buying those albums coming yeah. because you have to buy the album then right. to That's make right. these things number one or call it the radio station and yeah. request it. And especially in the '80s when there's so many other songs to choose. And 1983 oh. was a great year. Oh, there were some yeah. great songs in 1983. There were. Um, yeah. So yeah, no yeah, ideas. I, I, yeah, yeah, that just defies defies logic to me. And it and, and these songs are all songs that come on like the '80s stations that you and I listen to like in the car yeah. a lot. So that's one of those ones that as soon as I hear, gotta change, change the channel. Gotta so, change. I, you know, that's a song I, you know, I probably wouldn't change the channel for. Okay. But and I think some of why maybe it it even today is is um, you know makes it its way onto the playlist is because. Um, I, I, you know, it is kind of a dance song, you know, okay. a party song, maybe. I don't know, but that I yeah, it certainly wouldn't be one of my one of my favorites. Yeah, um, without a doubt, it's not like the Eurythmics, where if it comes on the car, Ginger 
she turns the, the radio station, throws the radio out the window, oh, wow. whatever. She doesn't like the Eurythmics. 83 okay. as well, 1983 okay. as well. Okay. So is that, is that, is that sweet on your list? No, it's not on my list. That's oh, okay. why if Ginger okay. were here, it would be. Oh, okay. She would have five from the Eurythmics. Okay. I think, that would be her least favorite. All right, so we'll go uh, with my, uh, my next one. I'll go uh, a couple years down the line here to uh, 1985. In 1985, there was a terrible crisis in Ethiopia. Yep. And so USA for the World, which was virtually, uh, you know, every artist they could get together, um, they sang their song, We Are the World. And it's just not a song that I really care to listen to. I'm, I'm One of my least favorite songs. I'm, I'm completely with you. I mean, I, 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 I totally understand the, the, the tragedy and the plight yep. of those people That's right. at that time. And, you know, we certainly wanted to do our part to help. With that, but um, but they could have written a better song. Well, it, yeah, and it's and you know to to be to to try to bring all of these celebrities together in order to for to to benefit those who so desperately need it. It's a great, wonderful cause. Uh, the song just didn't yeah didn't do anything for me. Yeah, and, and when you think about other other events or other other things that happened yeah. for this, uh, like you look at Live Aid, Live Aid as an example. Farm Aid. And, yeah, yeah, I mean just how epic. Those right. performances were right. because they, they they allowed those individual artists to perform their yep. stuff, you know, the way that they wanted. Right. And and then there were even some collaborations within yep. Yep. within those kind of things. When I think about uh, the Freddie Mercury tribute concert, sure. where other artists teamed up with either other artists to do Queen songs mm -hmm. or do their iconic songs, yep. and you just get some great like mashups on yes. Yes. um come out of that. But but yeah, to it, it really was. It was kind of like they horned all this together and yep. kind of like okay. Because we held this artist is going to be big, and it sold a lot of copies. It did sell a lot of copies. It, it helped Raised a lot. lot I mean, it helped a lot of people out because because um, they did it all for free, yeah. um, which was which was awesome. And, and this by no means is any is any uh, chastisement of the artists that that no, up to help not at out. all. No, it, it, and it's wonderful that they would use their celebrity for that for that end. Absolutely, yeah, yeah great calls. Just not a great a great song. Yeah, so. or just not one we resonated with. Now, yeah. that was when they did Hands Across America as well, right? That's right. Yeah. Now, were you part of that? I was not. My mom drug me out. To, did you? To, did oh, you really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. We, we were out on uh, Pulaski Highway in Baltimore, Maryland, holding hands. hands. across America. Yeah. And now, luckily, we were in a, in, a, in a place when we could actually hold hands with her, which I didn't want to do. Right. You know, as a nine-year-old kid, yeah. you know, or however old I was. Right. That was 85, 11 year old. I had better things to do. Yeah. Because um, I'm out there looking. I'm like, well, maybe there'll be a cute girl here. There was not. You know, no, no they, they were at home. Yeah. But there were some places in America where you, there weren't enough people to hold hands. They were like holding ribbons and pieces of rope, like connected. Just, wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, we didn't. We didn't participate in that. Yeah, you were um, lucky. Yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> we were lucky. <laughs> Tell you what. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't do it now because of COVID. So, you know, no, all German folks, we can no holding hands any longer. Uh, if, only, if only it was around then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Uh, okay, so what's next? What's next on your list? So that one was on my list, but I have a big list. Okay. So um so okay, you did 85. All right, I'm gonna go with 84. Okay. So this is an artist which is a great artist and in this is just a song for whatever reason just didn't resonate with me, okay. at, especially at the time. And uh, it's gonna be Billy Ocean, mm -hmm. who I've actually seen in concert. Mm -hmm. uh, now he's a tremendous artist. Yeah. I really like him, but but he did a song called uh, Caribbean Queen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the time. And I think he actually had three number one hits in the 80s. Sure did. Uh, this was one of them. Um, so very successful artist. Um, interesting now, I don't actually mind the song that much yeah. now. Mm -hmm. But back then, I just really just didn't, Is that right? just didn't care for it. Okay. Um, and I think, I think maybe it just sounded a little bit different. Um, and I was just interested in some other things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but even, even now, while I, while I listen to it and I can pick out the parts that I kind of like, um, and I can appreciate it for what it is, uh, it's still not one of my favorite songs, yeah. um, but I do I do like Billy Ocean quite a bit. And it's funny because when he sings live, I really like him doing it live. Oh right, okay. but just the recorded version just just doesn't do it for me. You know what's interesting, uh, Paul, about that is the the diversity of musical styles that nonetheless made it to number one in the eighties. Oh, yeah. That it seems like today. Uh, every every genre, you know, a radio station has one particular genre, and all of the music sounds close to the same um, and it, you know the themes can be the same and the uh, beat is the same and the music's the same whereas you know you can have a Billy a Billy Ocean and a Billy Idol or a Billy Ocean and a Def Leppard just within yeah. a few weeks of one oh, another yeah. and so 
um, I, you know, the diversity of, of what made it to number one in the 80s. Um, you know, would allow you, you, you know, got to listen to Billy Ocean for a few days, but then after that, you're on to the next thing. So, on to the next, yeah. No, that's, that's right. good. That's yeah. good. Okay. All right, so I'll go then uh, to 1986. Okay. And I'm going to go with Simply Red holding back the years. Okay. Which I'm not going to sing for everybody. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. But it was not, it was not a good song for me. It's not one that I liked. Uh, nothing wrong with the song. Mm -hmm. um, it just... Um, you know the 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 vocals. In fact, I'm not sure there's a simply red song that that I did like because uh, I had another one that made it on the list later. But you know, further down the list, but um, not in the top five. But just not. It, it wasn't a wasn't a, an artist, a, a band that I was um, really resonated with. And maybe it was. I liked other you know other sounds at the time. But. So I'm I'm with you on that one. Um, and, and interestingly enough, like that was one of the ballad songs that, like never got played at, at the skating rink. Yeah. Even. Like, yeah. which kind of tells you that tells something. You something. Like, clearly, that that was going to be more adult, contemporary yeah. kind of song as opposed right. for the young crowd. Yeah. Um, but I'm with you. That's the song that made it onto all the pop radio mm -hmm. stations, and nobody that I knew was listening to mm -hmm. that. No. Um, I, and I, I think because like the subject matter of the song, yeah. just was was not not resonating with us no. at that age. No. But I'm with you. Even today, just wouldn't listen to I, it. Yeah, just don't really care about yeah. it. No. So, okay. so yeah, um, I'm trying to. I'm struggling to think of what the other Simply Red song was because I, th I think they had, they had two charting songs, and I think that was kind of it. But I could be wrong. Yeah, there was one more, and I can't. I, I, off the top of my head, I okay. can't remember. I would block. I blocked it out. So. Okay. <laughs> you tell us down there what the other Simply Red song was. Yeah. In the so context. that was from '85. You said that was '85. All right, I'm going to stick with '85. Now, this is one of my favorite artists of all times, okay. uh, and actually was in a band for a while, had a tremendously successful career with the band. Saw them in concert, a wonderful concert, mm -hmm. wonderful singer, wonderful drummer, Phil Collins. Phil Collins. Yep. But there's a song called Susudio. Yeah. Which I have no idea what the world he's singing about. I don't know what that means, yeah. And I just don't like that song. Yeah. But there's, like, if we had to do, if we had to do favorite songs, I, I could easily do a top 10 favorite songs by Phil Collins. Just by Phil Collins. Or, or Genesis. Yeah. Um, and he was one of the artists that ruled the charts mm -hmm. in the 80s. I think he had eight number one songs. Wow. Um, when you count Genesis, yeah, yeah, in there, um, which is only one less than Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. had. and that that includes Michael Jackson with Genesis as well. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, but Sue Studio for me was a complete and total miss. Yeah, what a waste. Um, I have no idea what he's what he's singing about there. I, you know, I don't know. People go nuts when he sings it. They so, do. So they there must be there must be something I'm missing. Yeah. If you know what what's going on with that or why yeah. people like tell that. us what he's talking about. And I, and I think that could be a lot like Dessie's Midnight Runners because mm -hmm. maybe it's in it's in that that beat or that music yeah. where people can dance to it or dance right. a certain way to it. And um, I, I love dance. I love watching dance. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to be able to dance, but I'm not a good dancer. But I'll still try. Yeah. There you go. For a while. <laughs> For a while. <laughs> um, but that's one of those songs. If it comes on, I'm going to sit this one out. Yeah, that's, I don't, that's not you're going to the punch bowl. Don't quite know what I'm doing yeah, here. Yeah. And that's not one of my, it's certainly not one of my favorite Phil Collins songs. Not one of my least favorite. I do have another Phil Collins song that uh, groovy kind of love, which is not one of my, you know, that would yeah. be certainly one of my, one of my least favorite Phil Collins songs. But uh, it, again, that's one that it, it doesn't really fit with the other things that Phil Collins did. Mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't have an, you know what? What do I know about about music? But it doesn't have the same um, musical quality. I think it was almost like it was just a fun song to do. Um, Susu Studio, that is. Yeah. It was just a fun song to do, and doesn't have the same kind of musical genius that you find with some of the other Phil Collins stuff. So. And it might be. I mean, he, he, you know, incredibly talented artist. You know, yeah. was able to work with everybody in the world. Um, you know, maybe maybe he had some kind of arrangement in his head, and they were like, "Let's get together and do this yeah. session," and that's what came out, and they they liked it. Yeah. So and it sold. It sure did. All right. So where are we at? Number four. Yeah, number four. So I'm going to go with uh, in 1989, the Bangles, Eternal Flame, the Bangles, and uh, you know I I so didn't mind the Bangles. For that one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mind the Bangles, uh -huh. um, but Eternal Flame just didn't do it for me. Okay. Didn't do it for All me. All right. Off subject. Yep. Bangles or Go Go's? Uh, Bangles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I like the Go Go's, mm -hmm. and Belinda Carlisle, and uh, but yeah, the the Bangles. Okay, I, I think I'm with you. I'm thinking Bangles as a band, Belinda Carlisle as a single artist. Right. Okay. And then she was with the Go Go's. Yes. But, yeah. 
Yeah. So okay, so so eternal flame just just didn't, didn't do it for you. No, it didn't do it. Still doesn't do it. Didn't like your fire. No, okay. did not like my fire. It, okay. it it was not eternal. Okay. So no, um, so so that certainly wouldn't be on my favorite list of yeah. anything. Um, that's not going to make it on my least favorite mm -hmm. list. Um, but probably if I had to pick a least favorite Bangles song that was a hit, that would be okay. it. Okay. And I think that's just because they had so many other great songs. Sure. Um, that's right. That one just kind of didn't didn't do it for me. And I feel like I didn't like that video either. No, the video was awful. So yeah. Um, so yeah. But I know that that's. I know that we're going to get comments about that. I know. So if you like the Bangles' Eternal Flame, we still like the Bangles. Yeah. And we like you. That's right. It's just that one song I I don't like, you know. Yeah. That, Paul still loves it, but I don't like it. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> now, if I had to pick a favorite Bangles song, I'd probably go with a later song called In Your Room. In Your Room. Yeah. I liked that one. And also, Walk with Walk Like an Egyptian is, of course. is a great song, but I just feel like that one's played so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which that's going to have to be a topic we've got to do. That's a good one. All right. So, uh, so my next one, you did 1989. Oh, um, uh, let's see. I'm going to stick with 1989. Yeah. And um, I'm going to go with another just major, huge artist. I'm probably going to get comments on this one. Oh, yeah. uh, this song appeared in a big movie. Uh, the artist is Prince. Mm -hmm. The movie was Batman. Yeah. The 1989 Tim Burton, Michael Keaton, yeah. Jack Nicholson epic. And it was Bat Dance. Yeah. And it went to number one. And for the life of me, I don't understand why. No. I love Prince. You could pick any song off the album, Purple Rain. Right. And we'll just wear it out. Okay. But... Um, but bat dance, I just didn't get. Yeah. Now, what was funny is a lot of the a lot of the young ladies that I was hanging around with at that time, they loved it. I had to fake. It. <laughs> yeah. No, I, um, not only did I not like it, I didn't I didn't know anybody at the time that liked it. So it was it was it was on would have been on my list as well because it was just awful. Yeah. It just I I, I don't get it. Um, yeah. Prince is. I think Prince is just such an artist because mm -hmm. he's reinvented himself so, or had reinvented yeah. himself so many times, um, and he can just do so many genres of music yeah. so well. I, I just think I, I think what he was doing was just too too far over my head. Mm -hmm. I, I, obviously, I don't understand it. Yeah, because again, sold a lot of records. Right, it's yeah. number one. Well, you know, and I, I'm sure it's difficult to do soundtrack movies because or soundtrack songs because the songs have to appeal to such a wide audience, and Prince. Even though he was a I mean, phenomenal artist and did have tremendous commercial success, he did so in, in each iteration of who Prince was. He was doing something that was novel and innovative. Yeah. He wasn't just following it in what everybody else was doing. And I feel like that Bat Dance was, th this is just a, a song for a movie, and so it has to appeal to, to a wide audience, and it can't be his musical creativity brought to life. Maybe that's yeah. what it was, maybe, at least for me. Was, maybe. Yeah, it was not good. So I'll I'll add a, a one one fifth one, then I'll go back um, okay. to back to 1988 and um, the Beach Boys Kokomo. Oh, another big movie song. Yeah, okay. it's just not. You know, it it's got a cool feel to it, mm -hmm. and it's all, but it's not a, a, as a song. It's one of the again. It was difficult to come up with songs from the '80s that that would have been in my least favorite. But it's not one. I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna pull it up on YouTube Music. I'm not gonna. Um, you know, if it's on the radio, maybe I'm changing the channel just to a different, it's just not even a feel, you know, the, the beach feel, even though it's kind of a cool feel, maybe it's like your Billy Ocean song where, yeah. you know, it's just a feel that I'm not, I'm not really into. Just not feeling it. Not feeling it. Yeah. Not feeling it. So I was feeling, in the eighties when Kokomo came out, I, I kind of liked it. And I, th I think, I think that was at a time when I was a little bit older, um, as a teenager and my mom really liked that song. Mm -hmm. She really okay. liked it. And so that was kind of a song when it would come on, you know, we could kind of sing along to that. Sure, together. sure. No, um, because I'm the guy that if a song comes on in the car that I like, I'm singing along to it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not with you. Yeah. Probably, but with most other people. Yeah. Probably even with you. With, of course. Please do. You know, the, the, like Gloria Estefan says, yeah. the rhythm does get you. It does. It gets you off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that was, I have memories of driving to the ocean, to yeah. Ocean City, okay. um, and singing along to that with my mom. Um, and, and there's those good nostalgic feelings, but funnily enough, mm -hmm. um, when that song comes on the 80s channel now, I'll usually be looking around the dial to see if something else exists. There's a better option. Yeah. Not, wasn't my favorite song in the 80s, still not my favorite song. Probably wouldn't make my top five least, yeah. but, um, but I can understand that because, because I feel like that's almost that soundtrack kind of thing that you were talking that's about right. with Prince, where the Beach Boys had so much good music, mm -hmm. um, and really pushed the envelope a lot. That was... It, it, it was like this sugar-coated cereal. Yeah, like yeah. now when I think about that, it's like, you know, 
you want to get that paycheck. That, that's, all, that's all it was. That's all right. And sure enough, they did. Yeah. Um, now that had that had some of the people from the show Full House in the video. Yeah, that's right. I think, which is kind of odd. <laughs> now that you think about it, it, it kind of doesn't fit in anything. Yeah. But, but hey. Yeah. Well, and the video was just it, it was meant to be just a kind of a pop culture expose. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. No, that was good. So, so was that all five? I think that's it. I think that's fine. So we've yeah. only got one left. Wow. Um, okay. Um, so, so I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go with this with this group because they actually ended up having two number one songs in the '80s. Mm -hmm. I didn't like either one of them, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna have to pick one of them. It's gonna be the Fine Young Cannibals, and it's gonna be She Drives Me Crazy is going to be uh, gonna be what I'm gonna pick. They also had Young Thing, which also went to number one. I don't know how either one of them got there. Right. Um, that was gonna be from 1989. And, um, and and they kind of represented a new musical direction mm -hmm. almost. Um, you had them, you had Terrence Trent Darby yeah. had a song, um, you had a couple of other people who were doing things kind of in that vein. Mm -hmm. Clearly they did it well because the song went, they, they not only had this, this number one song, they had an additional one, um, but whatever they were doing, I just didn't get. Yeah. Uh, the sounds that they were using um, just didn't resonate with me then, they don't mm -hmm. today. The lyrics, it's just basically a re repetition say of, of over the same over. thing. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of, this, no. a lot of songs that I like do that same sure, thing. Sure, um, But I just, I just don't get it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm just not cool enough. I don't know. I, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think it's that, Paul. Okay. I it's, yeah, okay. I, I, but I, I think maybe it is. There's a, there's a shift in musical style that begins there in the late, in the late 80s. And, um, you know, even yeah. if you go back probably... 87, 88, you start to get into, it became easier for me in looking at these songs to pick out songs in the eight, in the late 80s, 87, 88, 89, uh, maybe not 87, that was a, there were some really good songs in, in 87, yeah. but 88 and 89, it became a little easier. So It's funny you mention that, because I don't think, I don't think that either one of us had a song before 1983. No, that's that right. That was on the list. That's but right. yeah, but once I got to 89, I had yeah. a bunch. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's right. And you're right. The 80s, to me, were really divided into three sections. Mm -hmm. You had the early 80s, which was heavily influenced with the 70s. Yeah, sure. Um, and I would say that was from like 80 to 82. Mm -hmm. Then you had 83 to 86. Yep. And then you had 87 on to 89. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think we're going to have to do favorite favorite songs or artists or something right. from those different times. I, I think it's a great idea. It's awesome. great. If you'd like to hear that, let us know down in the comments. Yeah, but yeah please. Yeah, that'd be great, a great topic. All right, so... These were hard lists for us to come up with. Um, clearly, we, we had some extras, yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially once we got into the later 80s. That's right. Um, but that was kind of a good cross-section of yeah. the 80s yeah, for us as far as the least favorite. Now, we know that you guys had a least favorite song that maybe we didn't mention. Please leave that down below. Or if you just think we were totally off on some of our picks, like Eternal Flame. Yeah. Um, or Bat Dance for me. <laughs> <laughs> or if you'd like to see me do the Bat Dance and Steve sing Eternal Flame. I'm all for that. <laughs> All right, uh, leave those comments down below, please. Leave the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, hit that share button and uh, make sure to subscribe. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. We sure do appreciate it. And we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.